Hello, everyone. Welcome to Happy Chat yet again. Great friend on the show this week. Brilliant star impressionist. You've seen him on Britain's Got Talent and other stuff. He's fantastic. Please welcome Mr. Paul Berlin. Hello, buddy. Hello, mate. How are you? Great to there see you. He's live in his kitchen. How are you doing, mate? Look, it's a right. happy chat and you look completely happy. Are you getting through it all? Yes, so fine. <laughs> with yeah, all we're the, okay. we're good. yeah with all the performers i've been speaking to basically we just want to get out there and 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 do what we do again don't we and and hopefully things go the way we want you and i will be performing together again in september a couple of dates in bristol one in exeter yes Let's do it, because the, the comradeship of doing shows together is fantastic and i, uh, I would say the comradeship of, you know, normal life is something that we will miss so much. You're lucky. You're like me. You've got a wonderful uh, lady to share your life with. How is your good lady? Leah is very well, thank you. Um, she's get, she's actually, as we speak, um, she's getting a little bit upset because she's having to go back to work soon. <laughs> so um, she's like, um, she's going to have separation anxiety from well i don't know necessarily from me but from the house probably <laughs> <laughs> well, how, did you, how did you two meet because i've seen some pictures of her per performance did you meet on a show how did that all happen oh mate uh yes yeah, it's uh 15 years ago now blimey and um we worked we worked together we did a tour together a summer season tour around some of the holiday parks and we used to pantomime in the afternoon and then we did a variety show in the evening. This sounds uh, havenish. Yes, it is very havenish. And it was for Kudos, actually, funny enough. Was it? And um, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So they did them back then. And then, uh, yeah, we met on them. And then uh, she hasn't got rid of me here ever since. <laughs> but does, she, does she not want to carry on the professional performer life? I know no one's carrying on that at the moment. But I mean, yeah. Did, did she, because I know that she's got, like, a normal job, whatever that yeah. means. Whatever and, that is. Is yeah. that because she she had enough of the business or just to tide her over or or what? Um, well, she was always a performer from a very small girl. She was a dancer and singer and um, actress and stuff and um, very good, I hasten to add. And she pants my for kudos as well over the years as well. Keith Harris and she worked with him a few times and uh, she loved it and but I think it came to when we sort of settled down um, in Bristol where I am now um, we um, Bristol we Bristol and in between gigs if you like she always used to do makeup and, um, and she loved it as well so that sort of slowly took over so she had opportunities to become management and stuff like that and it's one of us had to basically had to have a real job. <laughs> yeah, but so she's so, still doing her passion then. If she if she loves, you know, I love my video editing. When I video edit, it, it makes me excited. So if I can't be performing, I've got this other branch. So sounds like and Leah fell into that and is, is still yeah. doing it. Well, she still gets obviously she still gets the entertainment kick through me. So yeah. when I'm when, like yourself, so when I when I'm doing pantomime away, she just loves being part of the social, it's quite social, as you know. <laughs> and she likes the social side of her having to put any work in. Oh, <laughs> you know I mean? So she, has, she makes it with my friends and, and the, who I make um, during pantomime seasons yeah. and stuff like that. And she loves that. And then she goes, she has a few days off and then she comes back to work down here. And then we, she always, always, even when I was in um, Belfast a couple of years ago, she always makes opening night. Always makes opening night. Shell, Shell always said she didn't make opening night this year, which was so weird. But, you know, she was yeah. in tier three up here where I live. So th that couldn't happen. But, yeah, we, yeah, we're lucky. We've got supportive, wonderful, supportive ladies that, that Absolutely. we live our lives with. So it's, you're a passionate guy. You, you love what you do. Have you always been? When, where did it start? When's the first time that Paul Burling did an impression on the stage? At what age? Where were you? What was the impression? Go. <laughs> Go. OK, well, I always did the impressions as a kid at school, even at primary school, but I was very shy. Well, yeah, I wouldn't say you're <laughs> one of my shyest friends. 
I was quite a very shy, very shy person. Well, I was a very shy kid and stuff like that. I'm not very confident. And then, um, but what happened is I always did impressions at school and um, I was never like the, the, the school, you know, uh, joke story and like that. But I just had a selection of friends that I did impressions to. That makes sense. Yes, so, so that would be well, my what I mean was where did that come from? I wonder the first time you wanted to do an impression. I mean, why? And why? Who? <laughs> was it just was it just watching telly and 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 laughing and trying to create that humor yourself by sounding like the person? I, I I'm just trying to strip it right back. And I know. Yeah, what made me want to be a comedian was laughing at other people. So yeah. it, it, is that sort of the same strategy? You saw it and you wanted to create it yourself? Yeah, I think what it was, was um, it was cartoons. I always started cartoons. Right. When I was a kid, right, all my mates were outside playing football, going down the pub, right? Me, I was in the house watching cartoons and copying them. Right? I was walking around the house going, Beware, we were, we quiet. I'm gonna catch a wabbit. Wise <laughs> up, duck. I'll oh, see, son, I'll oh, see, son. Oh, you're a chicken off. And all that sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? Your mates in school <laughs> must have laughed their heads off at that stuff. No, I've got going to school doing that and sort of like going, thinking it was just what people did because I didn't know any different, really. And because I had the knack of, of, mimicry or impressions whatever you want to call it I just did it really and just even though I wasn't confident I did it like I said amongst some of my close my friends at school so they would remain my friends apart from that I'm very boring you see no, <laughs> well, I, I try to make friends laugh as well to, to keep yeah. people on side and to impress the girls and all that of course that's yeah. what you know what we did because we weren't getting paid for it then so we had to have some sort of reward <laughs> as it went on um so my circle of friends, we sort of got into our sort of early teens. And at that time, uh, it was Tiz Was was on TV. So he, at school, do you remember, it was either your Tiz Was or your Sally Swap Shop. And me and my mates were a bit, you know, far out, you know, really crazy. And um, we was Tiz Was guys, you know. So I'd be watching like Lenny Henry doing the, you know, this is Trevor McDonald, or Trevor McDonald, and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, Sally James, there's pop interviews and all that sort of stuff. And, all that sort of thing, and I'll be coming in and they'll be going, Oh, that's really funny, Paul. Ha 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 ha. And what they used to do though, um, as I sort of got to like 12, 13, that sort of age, again, still quite shy. I mean, my source, my circle of friends, they used to make me come in, let's say, like tomorrow, Berlin, right? You have to be from a TV program, so you have to come in and be that a character from that TV program all day. Wow, <laughs> yeah, so it was like. I had to be at one time because me and my mates were into like Mork and Mindy, Robin Williams. So one day I had to come in and be Mork all day. I had to be Robin Williams and I go, oh yes, that's about Mindy. Arr, 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 arr. Yes, I'm going to do double math. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's genius. That's genius. You're Robin Williams. It's absolutely sensational. So what when you're sitting down and thinking, I'm going to be him, what comes first? Is it the um, is it the mannerisms? Is it the voice? Do, do, do the mannerisms? If you get the mannerisms right, does the voice come easier or vice versa? I don't know. I don't try and analyze. All I can do is when I all I can do is, is explain it by I envisage that character, whether it be a cartoon character or a real person or a, you know a fictional character. Um, I envisage them in my head and in my mind's eye, if you like, and I just, just do it. I don't really sort of, I've never been one for standing in the front of the mirror going, oh, yes, I'm going to do my yes. Well, that all, you know, because I sort of just did it, you know what I mean? I don't, that's I just a gift, it. mate. That's a gift, that is. So, yeah, I mean, you haven't got a strategy. You don't sit down, right, let's get the tick right, let's get the arm movement right, then the voice. You, there's no analysis there. I'd like to do that. I'll do it. Not. I mean, I was going to say, can you give advice to people that might want to get into being an impressionist? But there's there's no advice there. You're, you're born with it, mate. Oh, no! I'm so excited. I can't hold it. I'm about to lose control and I think I like it. It was sort of like a party trick for me at the time when I was a kid. It was like a, you know, it was a, it was a novelty. You know, I never envisaged it as a career. I never, I never looked at it as like going, hey, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to be in the entertainment business. 
oh, fiddly day, and that's his life for me, as Billy would say. You know what I mean? It's it <laughs> like it was just like I just enjoyed it because it. I made a few friends, good friends out of it at the time. And that's what happened throughout the years. Because when I left school, I did normal jobs, you know, which you do, because I had to find myself. I left school with not many qualifications, if any. And um, and I sort of, I lived in a very small village out in Hertfordshire originally, and where I'm from. And my mum got me a job uh, working on a farm, on a pig farm. Right, so I was working in a pig farm. Right. right? And which was like hard work, mate. <laughs> I didn't like that much either. <laughs> so I sort of didn't last that long. But I did other jobs, you know what I mean? And I was, I was a chef and a little chef and all this, and which I loved. I loved that. But again, I was still mucking about, you know, doing the sh- I was on the little chef, like going, broody, 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 People would like me because they didn't realise that I was such a bad chef. Anyway, when did you move across to, to putting these talents on stage and honing it? Because it's a it's a completely different thing when you're playing to people that, that have paid to watch a show. You know, the material's got to be if you mess up in front of your friends, don't really matter. An audience are paid to go and see it. It's a completely different program. So what sort of age did you gradually make that transition to performing for us? I went to the job centre. I said, look, I want to find a job. I've got a bit of experience working in kitchens and doing food and stuff like that. And they went, got a job here for you, uh, Mr. Burling. Uh, we've got KP. They went, that's a kitchen porter. So basically you go in and you work in the kitchens. At Pontins in Seacroft in Hemsby, which is great. I'm oh, went, all right then. So I went along and uh, packed my car up and went down there and, you know, he was sort of like, you were the lowest of the low, do you know what I mean, if you like. And um, But again, I didn't know anybody, mate. And I was like, right then, okay, so I'll do what I did at school. So I used to start mucking about in the kitchens, doing normal wisdom, going, oh, we'll, do <laughs> we'll just do we'll get some eggs, eggs, you know, well, that sort of stuff. Rebecca, you know, you know, that sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we got no sausages and all that, all that sort of stuff and just mucking about and um, so this is 1988 and I think um, I was doing but then I was doing things like Julian Clary because he'd just come out as um, like Julian um, Joan Collins fan club people for those who That's remember right, yeah and um, and uh, Fanny the Wonder Dog do you That's it, yeah so as to um, moving on spin- <laughs> so I used to be in the, in the, in the staff canteen and um and break and someone say, Yeah, Paul, do do an impression, do another one. And I'd be like going, Oh, hello, it's wonderful to be here. Yes, I've not got Annie the one to dog, I'm afraid. And all this sort of stuff. Do you know what I mean? And they're like, Oh, that's really good. That is, oh, yeah, it's really good. And you can imagine there's people from all walks of life from all over the country that sort of on the run probably as well. Do you know what I mean? From all walks. So then one day the entertainment manager heard that I did these impressions. Right. He got me in his office and he said, um, uh, Paul, isn't it? I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, I hear, I've heard for the grapevine that you're really good at doing impressions, you know? And I'm like going, yeah, you know, all right. <laughs> Not big. Honestly, mate, that's what I said, right? And he goes, can you write me a list of impressions? You do. Maybe one night we'll get you up because it'd be quite a novelty getting a kitchen porter up doing impressions, you know? So I went away, wrote out a list of about 60 impressions at the time. I think it's about 60. Put it on his desk and he went, you can do all these. I went, yeah. Like that, you know, <laughs> yeah. Like not being, not, not being big headed. It was just like, yeah, I've always sort of done that sort of thing. So I mean, I've not something I'm, you know, <laughs> do that I do. And he goes, okay, all right, that's, that, that, that's really good. Literally, literally, I think it was a couple of nights later. I'm in a uh, smaller, there's a big bar and there's a smaller bar. Drinking snake bite and black, or diesel, as some people call it. <laughs> so he, um, so I stood there with Mark, who's like say six foot, thick, and I'm five foot nothing, you know, and looking like um, looking large sort of thing situation. Anyway, so um, entertainment manager comes running up to me, goes, "Paul, Paul, Paul, can you help us out, mate? Uh, the cabaret is, is running late. Uh, can you just do me five minutes? Just do me five minutes, right?" 
just do me five minutes. And I'm like, going, no, oh, no. I'm like, no. <laughs> like that. And um, Mark goes, right, you're doing it. If you don't, I'll punch you. Right? <laughs> He's a big lad. And it's like, going, oh, I'll better do something. And all I remember, mate, all I remember is I had this very dodgy, you know, the, the, um, the, the beards with an elastic on it, and that, you know, that, like a little Billy Connolly beard. Right. Oh, right. Gotcha. It's on the elastic. So it's like, oh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, I'm actually cacking myself. Mark's going, if you don't get up there, I'm going to beat you up, basically. That's why we're best friends, right? So I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I don't know. I don't know what I do. And all I can remember, mate, is them going, the entertainment manager going, oh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a bit of a, a situation where our cabaret's running late, but we've got a young man from the kitchen. Who, who does a few impressions? Would you like like to hear? It? And I'm going, yeah. The partner's like, okay, right, okay. And I'm like, this like, you know how what I'm like when we work together. I still pace now, don't I? Yeah, help like, me. Yeah, I'm virtually running. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and he's like, and all I remember, mate, is walking out, and he goes, "Please welcome kitchen porter. Give him a chance. You know, one of them. Give him a chance. He's a KB. You know, <laughs> give him a chance. Come on, give him a chance. Come on, family." <laughs> 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 he's even got hair um, so it's like you know please what oh, come on just please give me a chance you know what I mean I walk on and I've got this beard this Billy Cook oh no it was oh hello it's Fab and Groovy to be here my god and everybody went Whoa! and I was like blimey didn't expect that and I think I did a line from the um, audience with I think I did a routine from that anyway Oh, hey, it's fab and groovy, my God. You know, and all that sort of stuff. And I took the beard off and they were like clapping and, and all that sort of stuff. And then all I remember was doing like something like, um, something like, Oh, Zippy, I think Bungle's going out. I can I put some more pension on him then, George? Ha, 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 Everybody like that, you know. So, oh, okay, then. I think I had a hat on and a bit of normal wisdom and all that, a bit of Frank Spencer, all bit in on it, and a bit of treble. And I did a few cartoons or something. I, mean, all that. I can't remember, mate. It's a very long time ago. Hang on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> did you enjoy while it was happening? Did you were you enjoying it? I loved it, mate. Yay! <laughs> so it's like, a, oh my god. This is this is like I just, the first time I've ever had like such a massive buzz of anything in my life really if I'm honest and it was like something just went ah! do you know what I mean so the ah! audience the audience created you by giving you all their love and support when you did that yeah. that made you believe in yourself and want to do it again yeah and then we me and Mark left there not long after and we went to seashore in Great Yarmouth but this is the same year and we were barmen and back then, I uh, you had to add up, uh, Andy. You know, had to actually add up. Where now they just go, Bing! bottle of lager, eight pounds. Right? I mean, and um, I actually had to add up. When it got busy on the bar where I worked, they kicked me off. When it got busy, because I couldn't add up quick enough. So I'm rubbish at math. Uh, quite, that's two cokes, uh, two pints of lager, whiskey, dark. Co- oh, I don't use a dark coke then. But you know, whiskey and coke. What, two pounds? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so he's got like Berlin, you're rubbish. Get out and get some glasses, right? Go and get, go and collect some glasses. It's too busy for you because you need a bit of time to add up, right? So, <laughs> so I just got to get the glasses. He's to collect the glasses, which is part of the job anyway. It wasn't just me. Yeah. And it was like, so I was going get glasses and I get, bo- get a bit bored because I had literally like a few weeks earlier been sort of like thrust into this onto stage and got a bit confident maybe just after that sort of performance I started mucking about the punters going get your glasses you like glasses glasses all that sort of stuff right you know and um and people started laughing at me so I got got my hat and he's go and people going oh that's funny isn't it a barman you know he's he used to get up on the bar he used to get up on the bar and muck about on top of the bar and stuff like that because I felt a bit confident you know Again, the same sort of thing happened. So it's still 1988, so it's still the same season. So me and Mark went to this other park, uh, I say this other park, and Pete Conway was compare, 
at uh, in one of the other bars. Robbie's dad. Yeah, Robbie's dad was compare, yeah. and same sort of thing happened. He heard that I did these impressions, like the old dance manager did at the previous place. And he come up, hi mate. He was, as you know, crooner and all this sort of stuff. And, right. and he'd go, um, I've heard you do a few impressions, Paul. Yeah, mate, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what we'll do then. On the Friday, because back in them days, mate, when people only went on on the Saturday to Saturday, didn't they? Yeah. Back then, that was it. It was Friday was your week. farewell night, yeah. Yep, yeah, so, because he worked in the sort of over 16s club, um, he, um, he was resident in there, and he'd be singing away, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, what we could do, we can work out a little double act. Let's do a little double act where you can interrupt me while I'm singing. You can do, I'll help you write a little act together, put your act together and all this sort of stuff. And I went, oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did that on a Friday. So he'd be singing, fly me to the moon. Da, 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 da. That's it. Da, 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 da. <laughs> that's it. Da, 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 da. And I'm going, going through the audience, going, Mr. Conway! <laughs> all that, you know. <laughs> he's like, what are you doing? I'm getting the glass from Mr. Conway. Oh, can I have a go? And he's like, really? What, what can you do? Well, I can do impressions, Mr. Conway. Can you really? Oh, come on, give us a go. They'll pay for stuff. And all yeah, that yeah, yeah. And, uh, and they're like, oh, well, should, we, should, we, should we give him a go? Should we give him a go, everybody? Yay! So he's sort of, then the punters had heard about me doing what I was mucking about in the other bar because I was in a completely different bar. And that's how that happened. And I used to do it every Friday and we used to um, we used to just write a lap, help me, Pete used to write little ideas out for me, going, oh yeah, you can do that. And why don't you do, do normal wisdom? That, and then we could do, I don't know, I was doing cartoons or whatever and the, and the young ones and all this sort of stuff at the time. So, yeah, 98. So that's when he said to me and everybody else was saying to me, oh, next year you should apply to be a haven mate or whatever it is, you know? So I guess that how, that's how that started. So it's, yeah, 1988. The answer to your question about an hour ago, the first proper time I probably went up on stage in front of people that didn't know me was 1988. Next one! <laughs> next one then of impressions that anybody can do. Thank you. <laughs> then, a chicken in a library. Chicken, chicken in a library. <laughs> DVD. Now that's... In 1989, I went in and worked at Corton uh, as a resident entertainer. Right. So I did that in 1989. That was my first proper full season as a as an entertainer. Yeah, that's why we, it was it was it was, a, it was a, like a Warner's. As it, it's still a Warner's now, I believe. Um, it, it was the older generation, so they loved it when they did the Frank Spencers and the Muslims and the Tommy Coopers and all this sort of stuff. So that all went. That so that really built my confidence up that. And then, then I went to Butlins in at Scarborough for a little while. I, mean, I sort of went on out, and then 90, 1990 following year, I was down at Milroy from Hailing Island. Yeah. Yeah. And I too, and by the time I was 21, I was assistant manager and I worked my way up there. Loved that. That was a great time. I think it was more 93 when we first met down at Mullion. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. so you were doing that. You were learning, you know, you had your apprenticeship. You were learning what people like and what don't what they don't like, you were honing your um, impressions and stuff. So uh, how did the jump to television? Because everyone knows you now as from Britain's Got Talent with the famous Harry Hill impression and all that stuff. So did they court you? Did you apply to go on the programme? What, what year did all that happen? And was it your conscious decision to just go for it? Well, right, so... If we go back a little bit, I actually did Pot of Gold with Des O'Connor, Lovely, Lovely Des, back in 90... Yes, I remember seeing you on that, yeah. Yeah, I was still a red coat then uh, at Scarborough. The 92, I think that was, yeah. I was a red coat in 92 and whatever it was. And yeah, and I was and I, and I won my episode, didn't I? And I was a wannabe, do you remember? They had well, to line you up. Yeah, blimey. So... Um, so I'd worked with Martin Berger down at um, for what was West Star then. 
Yeah. And he was because he what he used to do was when I was at Mully and when we worked first met, um, what he used to do with me, because they just had Lou Bay, just bought Lou Bay. Um what he used to do with me was he used to go to me, Paul, don't go to work tonight. Can you go and do the cabaret up at Lou Bay? So he's brilliant because that because of course when you're a resident entertainer, everybody knows you and you're entertaining their kids and you're entertaining them and you're doing all the games and all that stuff. They all know you, don't they? So they yeah. So sort of... you get leeway, which is a bit different from coming in as an established exactly. act. You you haven't got so so Martin, much leeway. Absolutely. So Martin, bless him, and he really helped because he said right. Well, he, he could see. I think he could see that I was quite good. I like to think, or he just got a cheap act. I don't know. Anyway, so. <laughs> He said, I'll go up to Lou Bay for a mate and just do the cabaret out there. Oh, OK. And, and, and that, that was good because, like I said, it did, they, they, the, the guests didn't know me. They just saw me as another visiting act. And, and Martin gave me a circuit that year, 97. And also I did like Lanscove, uh, the um, uh, Lanscoves and the Devon Valleys. And, you know, and, and then they started because they were going quite well. Then agents started calling me saying, oh, we can put you in here, we can put you in there. And I mean, like they do, you know, so they get good, you know, get hear about you. And they go, well, even though a couple of years earlier, they wouldn't give you the time of day because you were a entertainer. That, that's show business. Going back to the question you asked about BGT, um, I was told this story a few times, the fact that I actually auditioned the very first series when Paul Potts won it. Did but you? I didn't actually get through. Yeah, I didn't get through. I got did the audition and... Um, Piers buzzed me in my audition and all this sort of stuff and then I got a bit despondent with it because I thought it was about entertaining and it is about entertainment but it's also about the yeah. story and it's also about um, it's not necessarily about being a professional entertainer it's about the road sweeper that can sing so yeah a lot of it is they want the story and that's Completely Fair understandable enough. because that's a human thing. People want to will someone, and they still have it in like the the voice when it's on. You see the backstory: someone's tragically lost their partner or whatever, and you do yeah. find yourself rooting for them a, li- a little bit more. <laughs> so, um, after not getting through for a year, what made you want to go back and do it again? It was honestly, I'm not going to lie, it was alcohol. <laughs> Snake bite rides again. <laughs> the welcome return of snake bite. Uh, no, what happened? <laughs> what happened was I was down in Lou in Cornwall doing Lou Bay, um, and uh, my mate Bubba. Do you remember Bubba? Big lad. No, anyway, it was a good mate of mine, and I had a cracking gig. And I was staying over with him because I was doing some more gigs down in Cornwall. And we were just having a laugh. This is four years probably later, four years later, since so nine, so it's nine uh, 2009. Oh, there yeah. were four years in between. Yeah. So 2000, yeah. Did you know that, did you? Uh, <laughs> did you know that, did you? Um, 2009, um, see, I come back out, I come out of the experience not happy about it. Not being pretentious or anything like that, because just because I cared and I wanted to, you know, have a chance, you know. Um, and speaking to Leah and the time, she goes, well, don't put yourself through that again. Don't don't even apply it again, because it, it's not fair on your mindset, you know. It's all very sensitive souls, aren't we, mate? I said to oh, yeah, we want to be loved, don't we? We want to be loved. Rejection, and, um, rejection's not the easiest thing to deal with. And so we, um, so I left it. Anyway, so I was down at Lou Bay, four years later, I was down at Lou Bay, I had a cracking gig, staying over with my mate, brother. And uh, we were backstage uh, having a couple of pints and he had his laptop out and he's giving you know, it all that. And he turned it around and it was the application to Britain's Got Talent again. And I went, no, I'm not doing that. No, not doing that again. I'm not putting myself through that, mate. I'm not putting myself through that again. And he went, ah, oh, go on, go on. I'm like, no, no, no. Anyway, so we, um, so a couple of, couple of pints later, I went, all right then. And I just, we are just doing that, you know. Yeah, that. <laughs> So you oh, didn't actually have a computer. You just did that on the table. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were in Cornwall, mate. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> boom, <laughs> boom. And uh, no, anyway. So he had a computer. Anyway, so we're doing all that, and um, I just forgot about it. And next thing is, I'm getting a phone call saying, "Oh, is that Paul? Yeah, yeah, yeah." And uh, would you like to? Uh, uh, you've applied. I went, "Oh yeah, yeah. Did I? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah." <laughs> like that. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So we had an initial audition in Cardiff at the at a hotel. 
And um, Leah came with me and it was just like, oh, God. So this is the end of 2009 still. So this is before the 2010 se- season. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And sort of like, you know, go to a room, just a, like a room with two people in and one's on the camera. So I just went in and just did my thing. Did a little bit of that. Yeah. You know, and that was it. And then uh, waited and then they kept ringing me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Kept ringing me. So, okay, you got your audition that it's uh, in uh, January, uh, whatever date it was, uh, in Cardiff at the Millennium Centre again, which I did it before and all this sort of stuff. Okay, fine, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they kept contacting me, and I was doing pantomime in Chatham uh, with uh, Sean Williamson. Oh, know. yeah, lovely. Yeah, Barry from EastEnders. Every now and again, right, you get hold of the news, uh, like newspaper. So he's sort of set up for me. And they'll go, yeah, Paul, uh, oh, mate, uh, yeah, see what, mate, this will be mental, mate, you mental, mate, you mental, mate. Because he says that a lot, I go, mate, you mental, mate. Uh, when you, uh, will you read that, read that, read that, uh, read that newspaper in the style of Ronnie Corby? Do it, right? So you go, <laughs> that's the set again. In Ronnie Corby, oh, okay, so I'm going, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, Katie Price, you know, Katie Price. Has got married again, <laughs> and he just fell around laughing. Right? <laughs> and, and now and again, he just go, "Oh, can you read that as Julian Clary, or can you read that as Chris Tarrant, or whatever?" So he you turned were a court me. jester. <laughs> I was, I, I was his performing monkey boy, really. At the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so it just, I moved like laughing. It'd be funny, and all this stuff. So there's so many stories. It's a really good story, but it takes far too long to talk about. So it's 2009, 2010 pounds. Most obviously. And he's so mad and goes, yeah, Paul, I think this 2010, mate, it's going to be your year, mate. It's going to be your year. It's going to be your year, mate. All right. Don't worry, mate. No. After pantomime, as you know, we all go on holiday, don't we? We all go away. Well, we did do, you know. And, um, not this year. Leah, not this year, darling. And me and Leah always went to Egypt because she likes the sun, as we all do. We went to Egypt. And um, ITV or Britain's Got Talent were constantly phoning me in Egypt, going... Got any pictures of you when you was a red coat? Any pictures of you when you was a kid? Or so any you pictures knew, of yours? You knew you were on then. Well, I knew I hadn't done the audition that we saw yet, but I knew it was a lot different feelings from when I did it the first time. Now. So it's like, oh, uh, so, uh, you know, all this sort of stuff. Got back literally like two days after we got back from Egypt. I did that audition, so that's when I come out of the Harry Hill. <laughs> Hello, yes, and welcome to TV Burp. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, have you heard about the singing laptop? Yeah. Singing laptop. Mm. Singing laptop. Yeah, it's a Dell. Yeah, it's got a new slimmer version now. Yeah. Also, oh, talking of Christmas, last Christmas, when I last worked. Last Christmas, I got a terrible Christmas present. Give me an R. Aww. Give me an S. Yes. In a way, just like an S. <laughs> yeah, I got a terrible Christmas present. It was a boy band set nev. Yeah, boy band set nev. Yeah, it only went in one direction. <laughs> I know. Also, before that, I had a Bonnie Tyler set nev. Uh, that wasn't very good. A Bonnie Tyler sat nav. That wasn't very good either. Uh, he kept telling me to turn around, and every now and again, it'll fall apart. <laughs> well, the chances, eh? And the rest is history, as they say. And it was just, you know, it was, it was a lot nicer. And instead of buzzing me, uh, Piers Morgan said that I was the best impressionist they've ever had on Brett's Got Talent. Then you go and you don't know you're through. You know you've got through, but you don't know you've got through to the semi-finals until you have the next meeting, which was Easter in London. And then they let you know, obviously, if people know. And yeah, I can believe it. I was like, ah, this is great. You know, this is, this is nice. And try not to take, like I said, Leah was, was sort of keeping my feet around by going, don't, just enjoy it. Just, just enjoy it. What's going to happen is going to happen. Do you know what I mean? You know, you've done great and I'm proud of you. Just do what you can do. And don't be too intense like, about it all. Yeah. Don't feel like, if you don't go through, then if you don't get to the final, don't worry about it. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, You've done what you've done and you've got a bit of exposure on TV, even if you just get if you just do the semi-final. Do you know what I mean? Because you have to have meetings with the people on TV, uh, producers and directors and stuff like that, 
about what you're going to do for the semi-final, you know, and I come yeah. up with this concept. Yeah. Uh, uh, a different complete because I did the Harry Hill in the in the uh, audition, and I thought I'd just thought he'd be known as the guy that just does Harry Hill, you know. So I had a meeting uh, with my directors, um, but he's got to be uh, in there because that's that's the hook for yeah. you at the time. So he's yeah, got to be there. Yeah. Of course, at that time, TV work was massive, you know. So it's a big promotion for his TV show on ITV. So yeah, it's isn't it? You know, it works. We know how it goes. <laughs> So I wasn't in, even going to do the whole TV Burt thing for the semi-final, but they, they said, we would like you to do Harry Hill again. I went, well, I don't want to do Harry Hill again. Do you know what I mean? I'll do a bit of it, but we, well, we give, we'll give you anything you want to do the, a, like an episode of TV Burt and you just do the characters around it. I went, uh, well, yeah, I suppose it's a good platform and it worked great. And I, you know, I got to touch with some mates and stuff, with some ideas and uh, Tony Rudd, you know, Tony Rudd as well. He come up with the... Um, you come up with the idea of the, uh, what? <laughs> Bill Mitchell's TV highlight of the week. What? I, as you know, I did the Falls on Horses and stuff. That's still... And well, I have often... to say, I've seen lots of impressionists do only Falls on Horses. No one gets near your impressions of it. And now, don't shut my illusions. The reason you did it is because you really love the show, Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I do. I love it. It's great. I love it a bit. And um massive fan of it. And when did I start? I didn't start doing it. Surprisingly, it was quite a late, later on when I started doing Falls and Horses, really. Really? What happened? Yeah, it was one of the... I was actually at Mill Ride on Hailing Islands. That's 1990, Because I was there two years. And um, I could do Uncle Albert. Was the, the was the first one I could do. So I'll watch that. What's so great about that is it's Uncle Albert before you turn round. The, yeah. the mannerisms are like, just unbelievable. I always get a little little buzz out of that because you don't even have to turn around. You don't you don't even have to face them. They know exactly where you and I was like, um and I think I was probably at the bar. <laughs> I tend to just have alcohol in my life. And um I just literally turned around to someone and went, Let's watch that. You see, during the war. Like that. And they went, oh my God, that's brilliant. I went, is it? All right then, Kusty Kusty. He who dares wins and Rodney is a plonker. Anyway, Rodgers, how are you and Cassandra? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, bloody hell, Bill. We're cosmic. Mon ami, Rodgers, mon ami. Don't worry, my son, because this time next year we'll be millionaires. <laughs> and this I'm still open all hours. <laughs> Keep up. Anyway, Uncle Albert, where have you been, you old git? <laughs> Lovely jubbly, thank you. I've been down to chemist because the doctors have prescribed me some Viagra tablets. <laughs> yeah, but the doctor said I've got to be ever so careful. I've got to swallow them quick. Otherwise, I'll get a stiff neck. That was a classic and it's been a bedrock of your act along with Harry Hill more recently. And I know you still doing new impressions. You do a, an awesome, is it Keith Lemon? I saw that Keith Lemon thought of Bang Thad. Oosh, I can't talk. And all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's so my... you, you just watch TV and sit there and go, I can do him, I can do her. Is, is, is that what happens? Are you still adding? more impressions to the show now yes but sometimes i can't quite get them and i'll be honest you know i, I can't do all, all voices of course how long do you give it before you give up on it uh i've got the best judge you see it's called leah burling and she will tell me whether it's good or not 
<laughs> yeah, I um, do that with gang shell goes. It's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, well, good point. But she um she'd be really honest with me, and I said, I'm I'm trying this. And one of them that's come to fruition recently is it's a voice I've sort of played with a little bit. And I don't mind saying this, um, since lockdown and all that sort of stuff, and as you well know, I've been doing a bit of driving just to sort of uh, do a bit of delivery stuff, um, just to sort of, not say for the money, but just to keep a sane sanity, if you like, you know what I mean? Yeah, you've got to, you've uh, got to keep doing stuff. I'm video <laughs> editing myself. Crazy. Yeah, I know. And it's, I just, it's a bit of extra money and it's just, you know, it just keeps me sane uh, and keeps Liam from killing me, actually. But anyway... And sometimes I get the van in this particular job that hasn't got a radio. So I, I don't know about you, but I sort of, I'm not a singer, as you well know, but I will sing to myself. And, um, and I'm a massive Queen fan. And uh, so Queen is my go-to. And even when I'm driving, or I'm actually running now as well. Whoa, you youngster. I know, couch to 5K. So I run around the couch a couple of times and fall asleep on it. Anyway, so we're... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm driving along and because I've got no radio and I like a bit of you know that bit of music and all that sort of stuff and so I start reading lorries or side of lorries and stuff like that and I started doing that with uh, various characters that I don't normally do so I can start off by going like and a car going oh look oh yes oh look this this so whatever it's all happening you know that's I'm doing this to myself in the van on my own as well right I'm not mad honestly <laughs> this is how I learned to do impressions because you're driving so much. <laughs> and <laughs> oh look oh yes oh I've gone back in time anyway so it's all that sort of stuff you know but I started doing um, seeing Bohemian Rhapsody in the style of Morgan Freeman do some please <laughs> I've got to get me here doing this hold on <clears throat> hold on <clears throat> to get myself into the impression I have to say Morgan Freeman as Morgan Hello there, I am Morgan Freeman. <laughs> so I just go, is this the real life or is this just fantasy? Got in a landslide, no escape from reality. Open your eyes, look up to the skies and see. So I do that to myself. That is brilliant. What? There's a routine there. Oh, totally, yeah. You could do <laughs> you could do Bohemian Rhapsody spoken and sung by about six different characters and take the roof off. That's your ender. That's your new ender. Yeah. I mean, and then I, you walk off to dan 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 well, make Come sure on one it. of them. Make sure one of them is Andy Ford. Of course, I do. My Andy. So is it my Andy Ford when I'm with you, my lover? Because <laughs> <laughs> every time I speak to friends and stuff, and I, I said I'm this, I always say to them, I'm always. Uh, they said, "Got any gigs?" And I'm like, everyone I see, oh, I got any gigs coming up. So obviously, lockdown suspension. I said, "Yeah, I'm doing some stuff with Andy Ford." Andy Ford, and they go, "Andy Ford, you know, Andy Ford does part of my job seven years." Like that. Right. <laughs> so they go, oh yeah, Andy Ford. So yeah, yeah not that, 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 right. but I would say, yeah, I'm working, yeah, I'm working with Andy, you know, and this. Oh, right, whatever, you know, Andy Ford, Andy Ford. <laughs> and then they go, yeah. You so know, I, I watch it person. and I think, oh God, I do sound like that. Oh my God. Right. So you're in a happy anyway. place there. You're in a really happy place with your your girl. Um, it is going to open up. We are going to get out there and work again. It's going to turn around. There's no point in thinking any other way. So what are you most looking forward to when it all opens up? Probably a snake bite down the pub. A black. <laughs> <laughs> if you were, hold on a second. If you just go around here a minute, hold on. <clears throat> See, when you've got your own bar. Whoa. Look. Oh, I want that. <laughs> Fantastic. Blimey. You see yeah, I, I always wanted that. We had it once when we were, I can't remember where we were, but we had a, a little bar. I've always wanted that. Oh, well, we, um, 
yeah, I love it. It's um, it's a good bad thing. It's a good bad thing, really. Um, so we want a little table. Could we find a table that was adequate? No, you know what I mean. We end up going to um, a famous um, oh B and Q. I can say that kind of, and um, they had that in there for like a couple hundred quid with stools with, with proper bar stools and that. Oh no! <laughs> oh. And I went, oh my god, that's amazing. And we went in there, and I said, all right, that one. <laughs> Because <laughs> sorry, mate, you can't have that because we ain't got no left. You see, that's the demonstration. Oh, what that one? Because <laughs> you've got no left, you see. So, what you need to do, right? You guys do, we'll bring up another BQ and you'll see if they've got one at the end. Oh, oh, what that one now? <laughs> so, we had to end up chasing all the other side of Bristol to get that. And it's brilliant. It folds up and everything like that. It's got, oh, it's just brilliant. And we've, we've branded it. Hold on, pause a second. Well, not literally, you know what I mean. Hold on. So we've called it BB's, Burling's Bar, BB's, obviously. BB's, yeah. And we've gone there. <laughs> Bear on. <laughs> <laughs> we've branded it BB's, right? So there you go. It's going to be backwards, I know. But it's BB's, my mate. Designed oh, that looks right? fine. BB's, Burling's Bar, fantastic. And it's a bar mat, right? And also... <laughs> Beer playing cards. No, playing cards. Wow. And we've got um yeah, we've got that as well, and we've got um you got tip are jar. a lost soul. <laughs> so we've got beer mats, we've got everything, and I've got taught myself co- to do cocktails, pina coladas, we do... Uh, oh, you don't way. do the Tom Cruise, do you? No, I got that far. <laughs> <laughs> Just give it, give it a bit of that, you know. <laughs> so, the, the holes in the in the, the windows, that's all. Yeah, brilliant. So but I know you, you love your social life. I'm always seeing stuff that you put on Facebook. You and Leah have the best time together. You like... I don't know if you like peas in the pod, but you just work and you're both happy to be together. And you you can't Absolutely. put a price on that. So, I mean, sending love from me and Michelle to you and your girl. And, and I hope we get out, as soon as we can get out of this, we're going to be working together anyway. So yes, that's- I'm so excited, mate. I'm literally- yeah, so am I. So am mate, I. Is- just to be able to do what we do, buddy. I know, mate. And, and pantomime, what's happening with that, I don't know yet, because, I mean, this... Like yourself, last Christmas was the first pantomime. I don't think I've first year I've done pantomime for twenty odd years. You know, like no, yourself, you know. I was very lucky. Yeah, because you had that. Yes, of course you did, didn't you? Down in Plymouth, but I've got pants on this year, so hopefully that's going to be. Uh, I can reveal where that is quite soon. Hopefully that, and uh, I'm sure you'll be doing panto. You're perfect for panto, mate. Well, I, I I've got contract with um. Uh, with um, Imagine Productions for three oh, years so anyway. So it. Positivity. There's no point, actually, in negativity. It gets you nowhere. That's what Happy Chat's all about. That's why absolutely. you have been an absolutely perfect guest for the show. I would like to thank you, Mr. Paul Berlin, star impressionist, one of my best buddies ever, a real talent. Thank you for joining me today on Happy Chat, mate. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Love to you, Michelle. All right, love her. See you soon. Bye. Stay safe, everyone.